So thank you, Patalim. Uh, I should begin by saying that I'm not an agricultural supply chain specialist, nor am I an agricultural economist. So you might wonder why I was asked to do this presentation. Um, and I think it's partly to, I, I think it's a nice compliment to the pr two presentations you just heard, which are very based on a lot of research, very focused on how food economy works, how the agricultural supply chains work, how one can get them started. What I, I was asked to do is to think a little bit about how this notion of enhancing the value chain for small farmers fits into the Indonesian development context, okay? And so I'm gonna try and kind of step back a little bit and give you a sense of why thinking about agricultural supply chains for the small farmer matters, okay? So I'm gonna first locate it into a very simplistic, simple, maybe hopefully not simplistic framework for, uh, in terms of Indonesia's overall development agenda. And that b simple answer to why agricultural value chain uh, matter is because we hope they will raise rural incomes, okay? Next is, you still have to realize that enhancing agricultural value chains has to be a part of a broader strategy. So raising rural incomes, you know, you can increase agricultural value added or you can facilitate movement out of agriculture. Okay, that's another way of kind of raising rural incomes. Third, in terms of, agric in terms of raising agricultural value added, you can think about raising yields or I think what we're saying here is that there's a need, as Patalim pointed out, trying to raise value added through diversification and strengthening supply chains. And then finally, just give you our take on where agricultural value chains stand in Indonesia and on what kinds of things the government and I guess the rest of us in terms of supporting the government and the private sector could do to strengthen these. So this is basically, so the, here's the simple framework. If you begin with the left, that's kind of what we see as the core, which is raising rural incomes by increasing value added per worker in agriculture. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can either increase the numerator, which is you increase agricultural value added, or you lower the denominator, which is you facilitate movement of workers out of agriculture. If you look at how do you raise the numerator, you can increase yields, so, or you can try and increase the value added from uh, you know, stuff that's happening either by diversifying or going downstream into uh, the consumer market. And then in terms of how do you strengthen supply chains, you can think about sector-specific policies and programs or the kind of innovations that Maximo talked about in terms of new contracting mechanisms. Or you can think about broader measures to improve the business climate and let and these supply chains form organically. Uh, so first, in terms of raising rural incomes, in Indonesia, two-thirds of the poor live in rural areas. So that's why raising rural incomes matter. It has to be any, the part of any inclusive growth strategy. Combined with that is the fact that per worker value added in agriculture in Indonesia has essentially been stagnant in the last 10 years. And if you actually do a direct comparison with Malaysia, it's about one-fifth what it is in Malaysia, and it's lower than Thailand, and I suspect most other uh, middle-income countries as well in the region. Um, so that's why I want to, right at the outset, focus on why we shouldn't just focus. There is going to be a need to facilitate the movement of workers out of agriculture, and in some ways, developing agricultural value chains, this is what I'm going to come back to, is actually can help that, okay? So if you look at the, these are too small for, you to look numbers, but basically the left-hand chart shows you what's the share of the labor force, Indonesian labor force, that is in agriculture, okay? So basically you had this fairly sharp decline leading up to the 1998 crisis, and then it's basically leveled off, and only in the last three or four years do you start to see a decline again. So in terms of the structural transformation that we associate with workers moving out of agriculture in Indonesia, the 1998 crisis really kind of stalled and set that back about a decade. So right now in 2010, about 39% of the Indonesian labor force is still in agriculture. Okay, one should all, the gray bars on the left tell you that the number of workers has actually gone up a little bit because as the population has grown, you know, even as the share has gone down, the absolute number of workers is still about 40 million in agriculture. What you see on the right-hand side is what's happened to value added per worker in, the red is in agriculture, 
So that's what I was saying is pretty much stagnant. The black is the services. Okay, so this is just a three-way division of the economy. And then the gray is manufacturing. So both, first of all, value added per worker in services and in manufacturing is to begin with much higher, but they've also been growing faster than in agriculture in the last 10 years. Um, so now we come to how do you increase agricultural value added? In Indonesia, agricultural growth rates have been falling till recently. And I believe the consensus is that this is primarily because public as well as private investments in agricultural infrastructure and support services have declined. I mean, this again is one of the consequences of the 1998 crisis, but also has to do with the uh, big bang decentralization. Uh, that occurred that transferred many responsibilities to local governments. Uh, the technical options to dramatically raise yields, I think, are limited, though genetically modified varieties might change that. So that's why if you want, to, in Indonesia, if you want to increase agricultural value added, you're essentially thinking about diversification and then trying to strengthen supply chains. Okay. Um, in terms of where things stand, in terms of strengthening supply chains, part of the problem is that if you look at where public spending has gone over the last seven or eight years or so, so that's the chart on the left-hand side, that's public spending on agriculture. Most of the increase that you see, and there has been an increase in public spending, is in the red, which is subsidies and what's called social aid, okay, private, as opposed to public goods, okay. Uh, the dark part there is irrigation, Okay, the red, uh, sorry, the gray is irrigation, and the yellow is other, you know, goods and personnel. Okay, I think this is one of the key things to keep in mind, that public spending has not been directly supportive of strengthening supply chains uh, in agriculture here in Indonesia. The very tiny, almost invisible black segment there is what's spent on R&D. Okay, if you go to the right-hand side, if you think about broader measures to improve uh, the investment climate. So here's some factoids. Uh, it costs more to transport a mandarin orange from the hinterland of Pontianak, which is on the island of Kalimantan, just north of Java, uh, to transport a mandarin orange from Pontianak to Jakarta than it does to import it from China, okay, just in terms of the transport costs. Uh, three quarters of rural roads in Indonesia were assessed to be in very poor shape. Uh, less than 25% of rural landholders have fall formal land certificates. And local governments often target businesses with a huge number of new local taxes, levies, and fees. And if you try to cross district or provincial boundaries, there are often various fees and other taxes that are collected, even though these are technically illegal. So this is where things stand. So given what I've said so far, I guess where we come out is that there's undoubtedly need for action on two fronts. On the right-hand side, you have what can you do within, again, we're taking very much kind of the perspective of what is it that the Indonesian government and international development partners can do to support, you know, raising rural incomes by developing agricultural value chains. Uh, one is to start shifting spending towards revamped agricultural extension services, R&D programs. Okay, and to shift spending towards public goods in agriculture. Again, okay? that will require shifting spending away from subsidies, or put another way, to target them better. Okay, like in many countries, fertilizer subsidies, a lot of the social aid happens to go to larger farmers. Okay, but I would argue that actually the even more important measures to kind of try and strengthen uh, agricultural value chains in Indonesia lie on the left-hand side, which has to do with dealing, reducing the transport and logistics costs that a small farmer or a medium farmer faces. If you are a small farmer somewhere in East Java, okay, you have very little hope of accessing markets, not, you know, not only in other parts of Indonesia, let alone the rest of the world, but even in Surabaya, okay, because of the rural access uh, problem. So here, you're talking about reducing the cost of inter-island shipping, increasing operational efficiency of regional ports and international gateways. You're, one idea we've proposed is performance-based transfers to local government to uh, invest and improve rural roads and infrastructure. A third is just completing the backbone infrastructure, in, especially on the 
two big islands, Sumatra and Java, such as the Trans-Java Expressway or strengthening the rail link. And finally, there is a need to reduce regulatory uncertainty. Okay, this is both at the local level as well as at the national level. At the local level, it's, it's as I mentioned, local governments have many new levies, taxes, fees that they introduce that hampers the growth of small businesses, and you need that. Um, at the national level, there is also regulatory uncertainty, the most recent example being you know, the possible inconsistency between the horticulture law that was passed and the negative presidential regulation on the negative investment list. So I guess the basic message is raising rural incomes okay, you will involve re revitalizing agriculture, strengthening agricultural supply chains, okay? but the solutions as to how one should approach those, especially from a public policy perspective, okay, may actually lie in a mix of policies, especially the ones on the left, which have this dual effect. You don't really have to pick and choose. They will both help enhance agricultural value chains, but will also, to the extent, encourage other activities and facilitate the movement of workers out, out of agriculture. And both of these are needed okay, to raise uh, rural incomes in the end. So I made up for other people. <laughs> Thank you.